There is a new addition to our international pandemic regulations that come from the WHO. They were um, uh, they were meeting last week in Davos, and I wanted to bring somebody on who has really been following this. Daniel Horowitz, he's a Blaze podcast host, uh, conservative review, and senior editor for theblaze.com. Daniel, how are you, sir? We are doing all right, even in this perilous time. Yeah, boy. Um, I- I'll tell you, I'm doing a show tonight, Daniel, on all of the things that are happening, and I don't even think we touch, we might touch on the WHO um, and what they're doing, uh, but that's not our main focus. The Everything is being lined up for an emergency, and when that emergency is announced, you got nothing. There's no freedom anywhere. Uh, can can you uh, talk to us about the WHO and what they did with their new health policy? Sure. There's actually a lot of positive news and uncanny news as well, in which the East and the West have been mixed up in our lifetime. So essentially, to go over this, the Biden administration submitted 13 amendments to this international health regulations that taken together would serve to cancel out all of the requirements to consult with the host country before declaring a public health emergency in that region. Uh, uh, hang on just a second. To- that wouldn't be, that's when you say the authority, that's, they don't, the WHO would not have to talk to our president or Canada's prime minister or anybody else if they wanted to declare a health emergency in the United States or Canada. We, that, exactly. That's crazy. You see that crossed out in the language of the existing Correct. Uh, international health regulations by the Biden administration. If you remember, they did it quietly, no press release, no press conference. It was discovered uh, three months later. Uh, but we had the most unusual result. Most of my lifetime, I'm used to criticizing the U.N., and similar organizations because of tin pot third world dictators. And we're like, man, you know, this is run by the third world. We need to pull out of it. But here's what's happening now. We have become the communists. So it's the United States, Canada, and Australia really pushed it. All of the countries we would consider as the Western democratic nations pushed for it, but they were ultimately scuttled. Why? Because, 47 African nations led by Botswana, along with India, Brazil, and Russia, said, hey, we don't want a part of this. We're concerned about this. We're concerned about the rush timeline of this. So it was ultimately voted down because of the third world countries. But it was emphatically pushed by the Western countries. That is incredible. Just incredible. So how is the West going to get it done Anyway, <laughs> you know, they, they, it's weird. They, they just don't take no for an answer. They just find another way to do it. I think what we've learned from the last two years is we're not governed by the rule of law. We're governed by the rule of political will. And whoever wields it and controls it wins. Uh, unfortunately, that's where we are. So it's not a matter of a formal treaty or even some sort of international a regulation. It's funny, the fact checkers were all over us saying, well, the WHO can't force you to do anything. Well, yeah, that's why I was saying states need to preemptively just say we're not doing it. Uh, but, the, but the reason why I drew attention to this is because it demonstrated the intent of the Biden administration. I'm more concerned about them yes. than the WHO. So, but so the but you, that- you were hit yep. by factcheck.org. Uh, the WHO has no authority to dictate U.S. health policy. Um, and in fact, uh, because you're the, um, uh, the editor-in-chief of The uh, Blaze, you were, uh, you were hit, The Blaze was hit by Facebook when they, when they said, no, this is not true because PsyCheck Digest says it's not true. Do you? It, it's kind of like the Amelia Bedelia books I read to my kids. Right. So, and they do this on purpose. They take this hyper literalist approach. When you raise a political concern, hey, why is the Biden administration uh, truncating all the timelines for approval as well as uh, vitiating any requirement to consult with the host nation in order to declare a public health emergency? And they're like, well, WHO can't do anything to you anyway. 
Well, yeah, I mean, that's why we're saying we need to stand up to that. Uh, but, but the broader point is that it demonstrates that the Biden administration is not done with this. They're not done with COVID. It's not like they're moving on to gun control or other things. I mean, they might be doing that as well. And they want to codify this permanently. So whether it's in a WHO regulation or not, this is what they plan to do domestically. And certainly when you start hearing about monkeypox and the next thing and the pediatric hepatitis uh, pandemic they're talking about, you definitely know that lockdowns, masks, forced therapeutics, they're not done with that. Yeah, in fact, one of the articles I was reading um, earlier this morning as I prepared for this uh, interview was uh, the fact that th- the defenders of this are saying this is not, you know, th- this is uh, not some crazy idea. Let me let me read part of it. Global pandemic response had re- relatively little coordination, little unity. In fact, it was more like 1983 and 2009's TV miniseries V, where politicians, personalities, social media accounts, and others seemed like they were actually trying to help the enemy, in this case, the uh, COVID-19. That allowed the virus to kill over 6.27 million people and counting. That's why the World Health Organization is discussing the Global Pandemic Treaty at the upcoming 75th World Health Assembly. Uh, Yet, some celebrities, a bunch of social media accounts have been trying to, guess what, argue against such a treaty. Yeah, having no global agreement in place before the next pandemic is going to work out well, right? So it goes into how, how screwed up the response was, and if the WHO would have just had authority to make sure everybody was doing the same thing and the right thing, how many lives could have been saved? But we know the WHO was incompetent itself. Well, what, what's remarkable about all of this is that they never take ownership for the results of their incumbency. We were not in control, I can tell you that much. We yelped about it for two years, but no one listened to us. Uh, You had some isolated areas that over time moved away from these policies. But for the most part, whether it was formally coordinated or not, which it's hard to tell, uh, nearly every corner of the world coalesced around closing schools, around masking, around mass vaccination, around denying treatment it's funny like you look at the denial of the hydroxy and ivermectin in america i mean that occurred in almost every corner of the world so they got what they wanted and yet we have six times more cases now even though it's kind of off season in the summer uh, than we did this time in, in late may early june of 2021 even though all the vulnerable people have at least three if not four shots and it keeps going and going and going, they never take ownership for their policies. They act as if no one's vaccinated, as if we didn't try all these things, and if, as if somehow we were in power, we had zero control over that. So, in fact, they actually did this. I think what they're saying is that they want more like the Shanghai type of response yes. next time. And that's what they're working on. So because they say that another pandemic is right around the corner. It used to be a hundred year pandemic. Now it's another one is right around the corner and we have to have all of these, uh, uh, all of these things to be able to control. Daniel, do you think that this is why the Biden administration is back in court trying to force people on airplanes to wear masks again? There's no question. I think people think that the masks have been repudiated. Um, And they have been with the scientific literature. Uh, We're actually seeing evidence of negative correlation with outcomes, certainly, uh, obviously, carbon dioxide problems and many other language development problems with children are unbelievable. The U.K. uh, Education Department is openly talking about that. But it hasn't been repudiated politically. And I'm seeing even places like Lincoln, Nebraska school districts bringing it back. Uh, Some places never got rid of it. Uh, you still have disabled people that have to wear it when they go to their numerous uh, health, uh, medical appointments. So this is not even over with yet. They absolutely want to continue it. And I think it's funny when you look at um, Justin Trudeau, he announced uh-huh. his new gun control measure this, this week. They were all standing around wearing masks while announcing that. I think it's a very powerful tool 
of control and submission. They absolutely do not want to let go. And there's very few states so far that have banned them. A few of them have. New Hampshire legislature did, but the rhino governor just vetoed it. I mean, we have our work cut out for us. I think too many of us are moving on to the next issue because, unfortunately, there are so many issues. But this is not done yet. The senior editor for the Blaze.com uh, and host of the Conservative Review podcast, Daniel Horowitz. Daniel, thank you as always. 